The Quran on Embryology Professor Keith Moore is one of the world's prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human, which has been translated into eight languages. The book is considered a scientific reference work and was chosen by the Special Committee in the United States as the best book authorized by one person. Dr. Keith Moore is the Professor of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Toronto in Toronto, Canada. In 1984, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCB Grant Award from the Canadian Association of Anatomists. He has directed many international associations such as the Canadian and American Association of Anatomists and the Council of the Union of Biological Sciences. Let's now listen to what Professor Keith Moore has to say about the revelations found in the Quran 1400 years ago and what science has only recently been able to find out through detailed investigation. In the 1940s, uh, Professor Streeter of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology in Washington, D.C. proposed a system for classifying the stages of human development. His system arranged human embryos in 23 numbered sta stages based on their difference, differences in appearance. The Carnegie system of classification was used around the world until the 1970s when a more refined system was proposed by Dr. Ronan O'Reilly of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology, now in San Diego, California. Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Although Aristotle, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from his studies of hen's eggs in the 4th century BC, he did not give any details about these stages. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely, absolutely no scientific training. The first uh, stage is ad ad adapt, and you'll have to apologize my, for my pronunciation. Uh, this is from Surah uh, Tariq 6. He is created from a drop emitted. This Arabic term refers to the forceful emission of fluids which occurs during ejaculation in the male and ovulation in the female. The male secretions called semen contain the spermatozoa and the female secretions called follicular fluid contain the ovum. This is the stage of fertilization and the uh, nutva and after the, this is what we call the, the zygote uh, referred to in the Quran as the nutva and the nutva undergoes uh, division which we call cleavage as it passes down the uterine tube. So these are the stages of the nutva here as it undergoes uh, cell division. Uh, it is, this term is used several times in the Quran when referring to the beginning of development. After examining all these references, it is concluded that nutva re refers to the small drop of fluid containing the sperm and the ovum. The term nutva is also used to refer to the dividing zygote as it undergoes cleavage cell division and passes along the uterine tube to enter the uterus. This surah says, then he made his progeny from a quintessence of the nature of fluid despised. Sulala is an Arabic term, refers to the gentle extraction of the germ or sex cells from the millions that are uh, produced. There are 300 to 500 million sperms in the ejaculate of a healthy young male. Only one of these is extracted from the semen 
to fertilize the ovum. This shows a, a photograph of the millions of sperm uh, when they are ejaculated, and only one of the several million sperms are, is drawn out, which is what is suggested by the word uh, sulala. Now, the same in the case of the uh, ovary, uh, uh, only one ovum reaches maturity and is expelled from the ovary, and it is extracted from the many thousands that are available in the ovary. Again, the idea of extraction or sulala. The next stage is amshaj, amshaj sura ad der tu. Verily, we recreated man from a mixture of a germinal drop. Uh, amshaj, then, is an Arabic term is used in the Quran to describe the mixing of the sperms and the ovum. During fertilization, uh, the ovum rotates, rotates within the fluid containing the sperms until one of them is successful in penetrating its covering layers, which we call the corona radiata and the zona pellucida, which is this layer here. Yeah, I'll read it again in English. Uh, it's Surah Abasa 19. He created a new individual from Nutva and immediately planned and programmed him. That was the first one we had. Oh, there it is. Uh, so El Kel then is an Arabic term which means coming into being and is used when referring to the fertilized ovum or zygote. Here you can see the uh, nuclei from the sperm and the ovum uniting to form a new cell which is the zygote or nutva and uh, then uh, here's the zygote or nutva again but it's just getting ready to divide into two cells which we call the dividing zygote or the dividing nutva. The next stage, El Takdir, which is the same verse that was just repeated. This Arabic term means the determination of characters and appears to refer to the fact that from the beginning, the zygote or nutfa contains genetic factors in the chromosome.